searching for gaming knowledge comes the man, the myth, a legend in his own mind, Critical. Welcome back, guys and gals. Critical here. Today I'm bringing you something different. It's called U-Boat. It is a World War II German sub simulator. Um, I played a lot of these when I was a kid. I really enjoyed the uh, hide and seek style of um, sub combat when I was a kid. And this one is looking pretty good. Really good graphics. It has realism in it. You can make it as realistic as you want to a point. It's still in beta. All right, still have a long way to go. Or you can uh, kind of play around on the edges where it's realistic, but you're kind of letting your crew do most of the work. You can do it yourself if you want to, but typically you can let the, the crew do the work for you. Now, it's more of a crew simulator. You have to manage your crew and you have to manage the boat. It's not like some of those where you don't hardly do anything with the crew at all and you're just like driving the boat and plotting the courses and firing the torpedoes. This one, you really have to manage your, your crew, but you can, but you manage the boat almost as much. It's really hard to explain. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tutorial. Now, load times can be an issue. They are working on that. And here we go. Okay, so first person view. You're kind of stuck in this right now because like I said, this is the tutorial. Okay, so this is the base that you uh, that you travel out of. And uh, that is a style of German flag. I'm glad they went with that style of a German flag. I'll say it that way. I don't like, I didn't like the German army. You know, the, the history of it, I wasn't alive back then. I'm not that old. Yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. This guy's got some weird coloration on him, too. So he's currently my captain. And that is actually German they are speaking. Now, the tutorial is pretty good. Uh, mostly. So, like, case in point. It's telling me to read the message, but it doesn't indicate where the message is. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. I mean, there is a little green arrow and it kind of does, you know, it, it's showing you, but there's a lot of these little green dots. So this is where the letter happens to be. Read the orders. And then you gotta leave the baggage in your bunk. I put my baggage in here originally. I didn't see this green dot. This is my bunk. And you don't actually open it. You just kind of drop it there. Then it gives you a tutorial about the different uh, perspectives that you can play the game from. You saw the first pers person perspective. It wants me to map a course, but I'm gonna, you can zoom out all right, and you can play in this in this view if you want. 
and you move around with the uh, AWS keys while you're in here. And then zoom in, and when you zoom in, you open up the side of the ship. And then you can play the game. This is probably the most, I'd say, normal way of playing the game, at least the, how I found it. And then it wants you to, currently he wants me to go to the map. So I'm going to hit M and I'm going to open up the map. All right, once again, you kind of shift around. It's pretty nice. You can zoom out. And you see all this. Now, here's the cool thing. It's not implemented yet. There's there's nothing over here yet. There's a couple ports, but you can go all the way around the world. Now, it, it's not a full circle. It, you go too far to the west and it stops. And same thing, you go too far to the east. So it's kind of like a flattened out map. And that's kind of what you're pointing on. They could have been in that set. So you, it's not a circumference. You can't go all the way around, but it is pretty nice. All right, so he wants me to plot a course out of the harbor. So I'm going to click here, and it's a right click. So that added a point. Now he wants me to shift click and add another point. And these are preset points for the mission that we're going on, which is out in this area over here. And now I've added all the points and he's popped us back at the ship. And he wants us to turn the engines on. So I need to find myself. Yeah, this is me. I'm an officer on the ship. And I need to turn on the engines. There's this flashing right here. This is how you set your speed. So currently we are in diesel engines. And we're going to be sending the forward to speed. I'll zoom out and we'll start pulling our ship out of harbor now you can speed things up there there is a time compression here we'll go ahead and do this now I am going to fade out and fade back in I don't want to waste your guys time I'm going to show you some of the key things some of the the problems I personally ran into and others have run into See, the funny thing is, he had me pot a course right through this. And I don't... Ah, okay. So it's actually like a locket. It does open up. Okay. Is that one going to open up? On, oh, it did. Okay. All right. Sweet. So when you get out into neutral area or sort of friendly area, you can speed up time in even faster. And then it will automatically start getting our course set to get us out there. I am going to speed up. I'm going to skip this part and bring you back when something actually happens. All right, so we're out at sea. We and the captain wants me to find and discipline soldiers that are being lazy. And they, they have to pick these little areas. Oh, this is the guy right here. He needs to be disciplined. He's going to be the one that I've got disciplined. He's probably going to come over here and go to sleep. He's going to probably pull that little corner right there. Yep. So I've sent myself to go here. Now, you can choose. Or you can give him a warning. Or you're going to make him clean the toilet. You're going to place him under arrest. Or are you going to execute it? And I'm serious. The guy pulls out a Luger and shoots the guy in the head. Okay. Discipline grows by 25% when you kill somebody. <laughs> That's pretty messed up. 10% if they're arrested. 5% if, uh, if they have to clean toilets. And there's no effect if you're uh, just giving a warning. So we're going to make him clean the toilets. But uh, some of the streamers I've watched, uh, yeah, they have a reputation for... Uh, killing the cooks if the cook burns the eggs you can discipline the cook and these people uh, have been uh, killing the cooks see now you have to go clean the uh, clean the toilets so these are some 
some of the basic things that you're going to have to do in the game. Stock the galley. Go click on yourself. Click on the storage room. Now here's the trick. You want to click on the galley. See, if I pick this up right now, I'm putting it in my inventory. I don't want to put it in my inventory. I want to stock it, stock this up in the galley. So we're going to put some exotic fruits. It'll help raise morale and it helps fight off scurvy as, as well. So it's not going into my inventory. It's going to go into the galley. And you'll watch my guy walk over real quick and he will fill up the galley. That number just changed. And that's my cook sitting there eating the soup. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Or you can see the guy in the background is sitting there cleaning the toilets. <laughs> The one thing you don't want to do is make the uh, the cook clean the toilets. We don't want to get people sick. And now we're just reaching the destination. So I'm going to show you how fast this can go. This is what this is the the full speed mode. So it's not great, but it's not too bad. So once you enter an area it starts to load that area and we've reached the area of our mission our mission is to find this this sunk freighter and we need to get this special radar top secret radar technology and bring it aboard so that's what we're doing and we need to make sure the british don't see us doing it if at all possible let's speed up time Brings me in. And you can zoom all the way down and see. I'm going to go ahead and stop real quick. And I need to get myself up. Because I was in my bunk at the time. Just sitting there and go turn on the spotlight. Now I've brought myself exactly to the right area already, but you know, we have to turn the spotlight on. We have to follow. There we go. And we're spotted and we've spot the wreckage. Open up the map. Ah, I thought I already was in the right spot. Okay. We'll set sail. Speed up time again. Yeah, maybe I'm a trouble. Let me do it. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna go down to speed one. I'm gonna first stop the boat. Now there's crates in the water. And we need to find out what's in those crates. It's this I've seen other people play it and it's a lot more realistic because you have to like send a boat out. So what I did is I zoomed in all the way to myself. And this is one of those times where first person mode is better. Yeah, you kind of walk in between, you know, in two people. And then when you're down in the ship, uh, they can push you around. You can get bumped around. So that is, it's it's a game in, in beta. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. So we're going to walk out here. We're going to highlight these three wooden crates. And that was a dinghy. There's a wooden crate. I'm not going to place that on the deck because we don't need it. Because we're looking for... We got two really close to each other. I am going to move forward a little bit. I have a better chance of targeting the other crate behind it. So to bring up that, that menu, I did alt and it brings up the UI and I'll go ahead and stop us again. 
This allows me to see this one. Nothing. All right, so now I've checked enough that he's like, okay, it must be still on the ship. So we have to get to the ship. This is where most people have the largest problem. And I sat here for 30 minutes, racking my brain, looking up online, and you have to go to Hans. Okay, so this is a new person. So we're gonna take Hans, and we're gonna go into the cabinet, and we're gonna take the diving helmet. Yavol. Yavol. So he's gonna put that on, and we have to send the driver. But we have to make sure that we're right over the top of the wreck. And it pretty much looks like we are. I'm gonna make sure I'm stopped. And you you can't waste too much time because if you do, uh, you, you will get to the point where you can't reach it. So we're gonna send the diver to the wreck. If you're not in the right spot and you hover over this, you won't be able, it'll just show you a hand. You won't be able to investigate the wreck. I thought I was in the right place for the longest time. You have to make sure that when you're in the map, you're literally sitting right here, right over the top of the wreck. That's where you have to be. So click on the winch, investigate it, and it'll send the diver. We'll send the diver to the wreck. Now you don't have, another thing people got confused by, they thought they had the use like, if you hit N, you get into what's called the free camera mode, which is actually pretty cool. There's our diver getting ready to, to walk over there and go down. But you can actually go under the water and there's the wreck. People thought they had to come down here and physically do something. Actually, that's not the case. You just have to send the diver down and then the diver will report back and tell you what they find and then you tell the diver what to do. Oops, rough with the glitch. I love the sounds of the diver because that's how those su uh, suits, they had these heavy weights in them. He was jumping off and he's connected himself to the winch. Click off. And then you have to wait for the diver to get all the way down to the bottom. Now we can see him falling down. He'll eventually disappear when he gets down here. But there's a diver right there. It might be hard for you guys to see, but there's a diver. I'll lighten it up in post. All right, let's get back up to the top. If this was daytime when we were doing this and it wasn't so dark out here, it'd be a lot easier. Press some time a little bit. Should be down there now. Ah, there we go. Okay. So he's on the bottom of the C4. He's gotten to the wreck. What does he want us to do? Well, we want him to pull up the large wooden box. That's going to send it to the surface for us. Now, I need to get back out of my bunk. And he wants me to transport the cargo to the storage room. So I'm going to put it into... Now, I can put it in my backpack and manually walk down there and put it in. Or I can just click on the storage room and drop it like there. And then I'm going to get up, go get it, and bring it back down. So let's fast forward time. Now, I was screwing around so much trying to figure this out that it was actually daytime by the time I would sent my, I finally got my diver down there. Since I've learned it so much better and have a better idea of what I'm doing, I can actually get it done a lot faster. So this is, I have to meet the captain. It puts you in uh, third person or first person mode because that's actually the mode you need to be in to get up to where the captain is because he's upstairs. You don't see him a lot in the tutorial, but he kind of makes himself known what he needs to be. Come up here. Down. And that's the captain. Herr Offizier. Kapitän, das müssen Sie sich unbedingt ansehen. Herr Offizier. Die Zerstörer nehmen ihre Angriffspositionen ein. So there's a destroyer in the area. Sie haben uns den Krieg erklärt. Cola, schnell! Schneid Sommer los! Sonst haben wir keine Chance! 
Okay, and this is some messed up stuff because he just ordered me to go over here and cut the diver uh, loose. <laughs> so this guy's down there on a breathing apparatus in one of the old bell style diving units and I just cut his butt free. That is some cold stuff <laughs> in critical state. Now that diver is, is dead and we have to die. And to die. We're going to crash die. I'm coming down finally, and I have to empty the tanks, or excuse me, fill the tanks so it makes us heavier so that we can dive underneath the water. Don't ask me how to drive a sub, okay? It's not my thing. So, the reason we're doing that... Ah, oh, I left the light on. Oh, well, nothing I can do about it now, because we've already done a crash dive. Should have turned the light off. But this is a, uh, a warship coming in, and they're firing at us. So I'm also going to turn... And go to electric motors. Or three, because we're going to be going under the water. And we have to go to the electric motor. Let's see my depth. Good. We are getting down to 50. Because we don't want to take any hits if we don't have to. Now, he's not telling us to, but I already know that I want to. So I'm going to take myself. That's the only officer I can control right now. I, 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 and put myself on the listening room and that'll allow us to use the hydrophone so we can hear where the ship is. Uh, oh no, they're directly above us, which means they're going to be dropping nasties on us, aren't you? Yep, here we come, see? Oh, yep, they're splashing them down. This is fated to happen. Oh, it's gonna be. Ouch! All right, so we've had some leaks. So the captain has told us to go ahead and seal this off. And to do that, he's gonna want us to. Uh, first, he says hit the space bar. It slows down time. I like that doom sound it makes. It's kind of interesting. So he's telling us that it's we can't save it and we need to close this to save the door. Hope we have enough compressor. I think we do. And then while well, that's being closed, I'm gonna take West and I need to go to the storage room and get some uh, spare parts. You should always at the beginning of a trip put spare parts on your engineer so they can fix stuff as, as we're going. And then you can hit space to unpause the game again. So everybody's running out of there. I'm coming over here and I'm going to shut the door and allow this area to fill up. And then Wes is going to come over and get this, uh, the equipment, the replacement parts, and we have to fix this hatch. And because we have water filling the boat, which is going to make us heavy and it's going to make us, we can't maneuver, we need to turn on the pump to start pumping water out. Now, all this stuff makes noise and that helps the enemy find us. So you got to be careful when you choose to do this kind of stuff. So it's kind of a warning what you can uh, you might need to do in deep, deeper depths so he's gonna fix that this is filling up I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the power to this room because I know oh wait that door isn't closed Cooler, I told you to shut this door close the door you're letting the whole ship flood Dude. Copy 10. 
The captain's gonna go close. Thank you. At least somebody's. Ah. They, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes they don't do what they what you need them to do. All right. Since we have this issue, I'm gonna go ahead and start the crew on getting the water out. So you click on the little water buttons and they start bailing water into the bilge. We don't really need to do it, but it will make it a little bit easier when uh, when it comes time. So West has got his work done in there. I am going to send West to the cabinet because he needs to get a rebreather so he can breathe in the water. And then I'm going to send myself to blow the tank so that we can uh, surface again. Give West a rebreather. Where am I? Don't worry about the water. I want you to blow the ballast tank so that we can surface again. Tanks unblasen! I'm going to get the ship to the surface so we can start doing repairs. Don't think we can even use... No, our electric engine's been damaged. Oh, no, it hasn't. But if I turn it on right now, it's going to get damaged. So I'm going to hold off turning that on and just hopefully surface just by pressure alone. We don't have too much water. Um, dude, I want you to yeah, take boy. some help. Yeah, I can boy. add some soldiers to help him and have him start getting water out of all these areas before stuff starts breaking. So now I've put all these people on bailing water. And it, it's not the greatest, but at least it's something. At least they're getting something done. Wes went back to his bunk, which for right now is okay. And we're slowly rising to the surface. Okay, so now that we've risen to the surface, we need to get into that hatch and we need to activate the compressed air tank so that we can dive again if we need to. Now, the fact there's all this extra water here, it actually ends up being a good Happy thing team. for us because this didn't flood, it didn't damage everything. So leaving that, that open, because it was only one actual leak, actually turns out to be a little bit better for us because this whole area didn't flood, which would have made it a lot, uh, a lot more difficult. Okay, I'm seeing the wreckage, nothing else. So looks like somebody went to the top, yeah. So I got to repair the hole in the pressure hull. I'm going to send him to do that. I'm going to turn on the lights for him. I am going to stop doing the water. Come over here and turn on the diesel compressor. We're going to go back on diesel engines. And we're going to start moving just in case we need to be... You know, somebody does spot us. We want to be moving. All right, so we got the compressor on. Diesel engine is running. And we want to get back on getting water out of these areas. Now, the pumps are going, but... We have got that come back in here. I am trying to get myself to turn off the light. And when we need to shoot down a enemy aircraft. And go turn off the light. Get up there. Because that'll help them spot us. And we don't want that. The controls are a little... You see me kind of flipping back and forth between scenes. That's part of an issue. I'm going to get myself on the machine gun. Wow. 
Yeah, see, the last time it was bright day. It was middle of the day when the plane came and attacked. Oh, okay, cool. What I thought was like the moon or something was actually the aircraft, a light on the aircraft. That's pretty cool. And I got lucky and took him out in this first run. Hopefully he won't get the chance to uh, to bomb us, even though I've, he's gonna come right over the top. So that's why I'm keep I'm gonna keep shooting him until this ammo runs out because if he bombs us now, that's gonna hurt. All right, so now we need to pick up this guy, leave position, get to the radio room, to the listening room. And because we're trying to use the hydrophone, it means you have to be at least a little bit under water. I need to get myself off of that and go hit the valve so that we can go below the surface. And I'm going to take us down to uh, periscope depth. Now, every time you that you dive and resurface, you have to come back over here and either turn on the diesel compressor or the electrical comp compressor. I'm going to leave the diesel compressor on, but it's going to shut off once we get below the surface because you can't run diesel while you're underwater. And we don't have a snorkel yet, so it's just going to go. It's going to get turned off. I can get west, come over and turn that off. And I'll have to turn on the electric one as well. Now you can hear there's a storm. So our radio man who was listening in heard the propellers of a aircraft carrier. That dot right there confu originally confused me. That's the plane we shot down right there. What we're looking for now is the aircraft carrier that it came from. And we need to plot a course to that. And as the captain's saying, it's easier to travel long distances when you're above surface. It's also giving you a, a an understanding that this is the kind of management you have to do. So now I have to empty the uh, the water out, push compressed air into it, so that we'll rise back to the surface. And he's telling us now we need to get our torpedoes taken care of. So I need to send Wes. I shall send him to the front torpedoes. And I'm going to load one we didn't have loaded up yet. And then I'm going to take myself to the rear torpedoes. Ah, oh, it's still considered flooded. All right, I need to get some, I need to get people working on emptying out the, uh, the rear compartment. Turn on the pumps. I thought the pumps were already on. Maybe I forgot to uh, turn them on. Get the pump turned on. Yes, the pump is on. And how do I know the pump's on? If you, uh, whoa, zoomed in too far. If you zoom up to it and you hug your mouse over it, I, you can see like the what waves coming off of each side. That's telling you it's making noise. Now, I could probably finish the mission without doing this. I just want to have that extra torpedo room available. And it's it's coming down quickly now. With them bailing and with the uh, the pump going, the water should be out here pretty quick. Because it's storming and it's night and the visibility is low, I can get a lot closer to the aircraft carrier. I don't have to go under the water immediately, which is something you probably normally would do. Because of the weather, I can stay on the surface. That's what the captain is telling us. So our aircraft carrier that we've been following has fallen behind their escorts, which makes them a pretty juicy target for us. The, ca uh, the captain wants us to go to forward Not one summer. so that we don't get too close. 
and then we need to start plotting our targeting process. This is where in the sandbox version, not in the tutorial, you could actually do it yourself. But we're going to go ahead and do it the way the captain wants us to do it. So we're going to click on the ship. And we can only, we can put myself on. We're not under the water, so the guy that's on the hydrophones can't help us. Once Wes gets done with that, that rear torpedo, maybe I can send him up there to help. So we want to stay close, but not too close. Got the torpedo loaded and I'm getting a good firing solution. Once we're at 50%, he wants us to go ahead and fire. I normally would say wait oh, eins, much we later. Oh, zwei, we and he bessern. wants us to, to load oh, everything. Drei, we oh, I probably vier, wouldn't we normally do this, but it's the tutorial, so that's what they want us to do. Oh, and you're waiting for all the tubes to be oh, flooded. Three and four. Now, I didn't have to do all four, but guess what? I want to have fun. So we're going to do all four. And fire. Now, you, what's really cool is I can sit here and in this view, tactical guy can sit there and watch the torpedoes go. But what's even better than that is I can switch to camera mode on the aircraft carrier and watch it from here which is i have to say the best way now it's going to be really hard you're not going to see the torpedoes coming in because it's so dark and i think we're coming in on this side but i'll zoom out and try to get us a good view we'll get rid of the ui oh <laughs> Big hit and a nice view. Two, three, and four. It was overkill, but it's an aircraft carrier and it's just so much fun. All right. So we need to leave the view. Now that's telling us there's a new group. That's his, his escort has, has heard the, uh, the hits and there's the uh, carrier group and it's going to come for us so we're going to set a course away from here i'm going to hit a couple points just to make us turn get back in i'll have west hit the valves real quick that's why we made sure our compressors were up I'm going to get Newman off of the radio for a minute and turn that off. I'm going to turn the pump off. I need to turn the compressor off too, but... I'm going to take a minute. Time slowed down because the captain's giving me orders. Take it down to 180. Send you back here. Get over here. Need to turn off the compressor for me. West is already hitting the valves for me, and I've turned off the pump. So everything now that the gyro compass helps you know where you're at, but it makes a lot of noise, and that's what we have to uh, take care of. Now I can go to the white switch. The blue means silent, so we're already in a silent mode. We're just going to leave that right there. And they've already switched to electric motors. Come on, crash dive to 180. There we go. Barely starting to go down. And I'm also going to speed up to forward three. So that I'm diving a little bit faster. And I'm going to put my radio guy back in the listening room.
and then I'll speed up time. So I've done all the adjustments, everything I need to worry about. Change your step. Huh? 180 is what he told me to go to. We should be good. I think if you start getting too far below that, then you're going to get the, the crush levels where it's going to start hurting. <laughs> Squish you like a tin can. Now you can see that my discipline is going down. The, the depth causes the issues. The fact that we're underneath a warm and they're, you know, they're, they're agitated. That's a problem. Our air supply is going down. The fact that we're on blue light and we're running silent, which everybody has to be quiet. It's a 15% green, which means it's not as bad. It's, the crew is only using four minutes of oxygen. They've been trained to relax when the blue light's on. That's one of the reasons you turn that. And of course I'm using my battery capacity because I'm not using my diesel engine. We have to get far enough away from the last contact before we can uh, go fast. Ooh, hear that creaking? That's the damage to the ship that's being affected by the pressure. You know, I'm going to be safe. I am going to grab West and have him come over here and control the depth steers to make sure that they're not getting too deep and to maintain the depth that I wanted them at. There we go. Now we're in the open ocean. And that's the end of the tutorial. They haven't completed anything else. It, like I said, it's a game in beta, but it gives you a good understanding, you know, a good foothold to get into the game before you start getting into the sandbox mode, which you're then responsible for everything and you can kill your crew off. You got to be really careful. All right. So this has been U-Boat. It's, it's an interesting game. Um, they have some work to do, but I, I'm so far I'm liking it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this content. If you have, drop a like, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Bye.